everybody, and welcome to New Day Northwest. We are delighted to start things off with a maternal half-sister of former President Barack Obama. She is a big advocate for youth leadership, and her current role is as a faculty specialist on peace and conflict resolution at the University of Hawaii. Please welcome Dr. Maya Satoro Ng, who is here. It's great to meet Thank you. Thank you so much. It's so delightful to be here. Let me ask you, first of all, how are you doing? Doing pretty well. I've enjoyed myself so much. Uh, we had a number of events for the scholarship in mom's name, mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, selected some incredible young women who were going to have an enormous and powerful and positive impact on our communities and world. We're going to talk about that more in just a little bit, but mm -hmm. tell me a bit about your mom and her connection to Mercer Island for people who may not know. Yeah, so mom uh, moved to Mercer Island for her high school years and uh, found in Mercer Island a sense of safety and uh, was able to be curious and brave. Uh, and she always said years later that uh, Mercer Island was some place that um, helped to shape her character and uh, her commitment and um, and her leadership. And so she uh, wanted me to come to Mercer Island and visit and to Seattle itself, both places beloved to her. And it's good for me now to to be back and to be does able to do that. Does it make you feel that. connected? It really does. I would and think. I think that, you know, the, the people are so kind, but also there's a, a lot of uh, open discussion, a lot of um, healthy, uh, you know, youth leadership work and educational initiatives that are happening that can be emulated around uh, the country. Which is so important. Your mom's name was Stanley Ann. Yes. What, where was the origin of that name? So Unu she, she was so unusual it, for her time, and the name is is the first clue. Yeah, she found it uh, to be an uh, unfortunate and un unwanted <laughs> name. To be truthful, uh, she was named after her father. He was uh, fighting in World War II at the time of her birth, a soldier, and uh, perhaps uh, her mom thought that uh, he might not make it. Perhaps. Uh, uh, they wanted a boy. We've speculated, but uh, don't quite understand why she was named Stanley now in these times where we're sort of um, bending gender and, and being playful about it uh, as well. I think that it would be something um, considered much more desirable. And, uh, but she used later in life Anne a lot because she wanted to avoid being thought of as a, as a man. Just the confusion. <laughs> Um, I remember seeing a piece of tape from Barack Obama where he was talking about you and your mom, mm -hmm. and he said that, yeah, we moved around a lot, there yeah. were some separations, things happened, but we never ever doubted. He said you didn't doubt and he didn't doubt the depth of her love for you. Is that how you recall your growing up? Absolutely, and you know, the, the, the movement was in part a, um, a desire to share with us many worlds. She exposed us to every uh, religion and faith, great many philosophies, uh, music, the textures of numerous cultures and people and communities. Everywhere she went, she found a sense of uh, home and community mm -hmm. and connection. And that was something she wanted to give to us. And I think that um, while we didn't always welcome the instability um, that emerged from that childhood. I think we learned a great deal and that it allowed us to flexibly navigate many worlds as adults and to feel a sense of responsibility to others, um, uh, not just near but also far away. Right, right. Mm -hmm. She was a pioneer in microcredit, which fascinates mm. me because I feel like she's been undercredited for her research yeah. along those lines. And that's when I first got fascinated because she was such an anomaly for her time. Right. Uh, tell me a bit about her work. So she did uh, follow in the steps of Muhammad Yunus and, and of, of Grameen, but she really took things, in my view, to the next level and in terms of using microfinance as a tool to empower women in cottage industry. She, at a time when others were looking at wet rice cultivation or um, urbanization, really focused on cottage industries as a means to keep communities strong and to keep the country's economy um, hail in Indonesia and then in other places in the world. She saw that by focusing on these um, cottage industries and by giving 
uh, the tools and, and uh, processes of uh, microfinance a chance to flourish broadly, uh, that um, people could uh, find a measure of empowerment and freedom and could craft a life that they wanted and wouldn't, you know, run off to the cities and and uh, work as domestics or right. find other work that was um, not in keeping with their greatest needs, wants, and what was best for the health of their families. It was so really it was interesting really work. So you already social justice had, work. yes, mm -hmm. exactly. You already had all of that coming into your family. Mm -hmm. So how did the dynamics change after your brother was elected president? I mean, you know, he... Did you still give him a hard time? Tell me you did. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, that became my central job. <laughs> but the, the, the hope is that, you know, you um, all really feel that um, uh, the man that he presented to the world and to the nation is authentic. Because from my perspective, he did a really good job of remaining... Look at you too. Yeah, remaining true to himself and, and his, um, his character was unchanged. His relationship with those around him, people he loved, remained the same. Still goes to Hawaii for Christmas and to spend time with high school friends and uh, engages in many of the activities he loved as a teen. The point is that you know you become a more expansive version of yourself. You become more complex. You become um, more uh, committed to the rest of the world when you occupy a position like that. But he never lost sight of who he is at the core, and therefore his sense of purpose and um, and his drive to um, remain true to his um, ethics. I think. Uh, was sustained throughout and continues to be there. And in the work of the Obama Foundation, we see him working on, you know, civic uh, muscle, you know, bringing and uplifting leaders to help them to expand their reach. These emerging leaders are people who have demonstrated leadership but have mm -hmm. a long leadership trajectory. And um, really his hope is to identify extraordinary people doing important things around the world uh, to engage in collaborative problem solving and to have a demonstrable uh, daily impact on their communities. You both are doing that work, you as a peace advocate and mm. an advocate for youth. So tell me what happened on Mercer Island this weekend. So on Mercer Island this weekend we celebrated young women. Uh, there were um, uh, a number of extraordinary applicants and we selected two hoping in the future to have more schools, more uh, young women. But these are women who there are, they are... There's a picture of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. These are young women who are devoted to service. These are young women who are uh, local, you know, both uh, engaged in, in um, action on a local basis, but connected and committed to uh, global you know, some grassroots diplomacy. These are uh, young women who are, whether through um, medicine, education, uh, or other means, working to uh, solve uh, problems uh, in their communities and spaces. And I admire them greatly. They give me a strong sense of uh, hope. And we are looking to expand the number of schools and the number of scholarships to these girls in order to uh, you know, have them perhaps build community and, and uh, have a rippling effect, not yeah. just in Seattle, um, but elsewhere around a the world. A rippling effect that starts with your mom, and this is yeah. the 10th year, right? Yes. So, so we celebrated the 10th uh, anniversary of the scholarship, and we, we had um, uh, sort of champions and, and supporters and mentors wrap around the girls. We heard from the girls themselves about uh, their... Um, you know, their motivations, uh, both of them, indeed, even the, those who were not selected, um, spoke of, in many cases, trauma and hardship and scarcity, but uh, the ability and desire to move um, from post-traumatic stress to post-traumatic growth and how that is something that is engendered through a service orientation. Mom always told us that service really was the measure of a good life and uh, human.
Amen. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was lovely to meet Thank you. Thank you so much. We recommend your book as well. If you'd like to become a mentor or help in another way, we'll link you to the Stanley Ann Dunham Scholarship Fund through New Day's homepage.